Welcome to another episode of the 604 Garage. Well, as the rain continues to pour here in the 604, we're gonna have to stay inside for a little while, so let's do a little review of the 81Z28. Give you guys an idea of what's going on. The engine is a six liter LQ4 out of what I think was a 2001 Chevy truck. Um, the reason I think it's 2001 or newer is because of the 317 aluminum heads. I think uh, 2000 and older were the uh, cast iron heads. Um, the entire engine has been rebuilt by myself. New pistons, uh, factory rods and crank, all ARP bottom end everywhere I could put it. Um, the rings are gapped for nitrous or boost, and it still keeps the same compression ratio. Cylinder heads, again, the 317 heads, um, not much done to them, a little bit of a, a decking job there. Took uh, 20 thou off, which is enough to bring the compression up a bit beyond that 9.4 to 1. So it's probably actually a 9.75 to 1 in that range. It has a crane cam, 228, 230 at 50 uh, with a 600 lift on a 112 lobe separation. Um, Z06 Corvette intake manifold and ported throttle body and some 36 pound injectors. Um, pretty much it. Power wise, good question. Probably makes near 400 at the tire, 390 at the tire, but it's never been on a dyno in this configuration. Only when it had the automatic, so. Who knows, we'll have to save that for a future video. Headers are hooker headers, one and seven eighths primary tube, three inch collector. Um, the rest of the exhaust is probably the nicest part of the car. It's made by a local shop, uh, Frankenstein Speed and Custom. Uh, Tommy, the, the owner and the fabricator, he built a phenomenal exhaust. Two and a half inch mandrel bent with Magnaflow mufflers. And it is super tucked, it is fit right to the car. It was not a kit, he actually bought all the little pieces himself cut them and arrange them, and it is a phenomenal sounding car. Brakes are powered essentially by a Detroit Speed and Engineering Master and Booster combination. I believe the master cylinder is similar to the specs of a C6 Corvette. It is a 9 inch dual diaphragm booster and man does it ever help the car. The original um, factory booster with the uh, bare 15 16 master cylinder did not actually work for this application. Front brakes are an old bare track kit system, they're a 13 inch rotor. Uh, based off a C4 Corvette and the rears are 12 inch and they are a little rusty because of the last time this car was outside it was raining if you remember from the light up your garage video on to the suspension we'll start up front and we'll work our way out back front springs are Global West 700 inch pound QA1 Motorsports single adjustable front shocks these are the stock um, re uh, replacement type or the Stalker Star brand of uh, front shocks. Um, Pro Touring F-Body upper control arms. 
stock lower control arms with aluminum bushings. This is a budget car, so it did get a budget build. Stock front sway bar has an IROC third gen Camaro steering box in there, which is a two and a quarter turn lock to lock. A lot better uh, feel. It took three steering boxes before I could find one that wasn't sloppier than the original one in the car. Hindsight, should I bought one of those 700 series, you know, high performance factory type boxes? Well, that'll probably go in the car later, but right now, keeping the cost down. Out back, Global West L3 rear leafs, they're 175 inch pounds. It has the Herb Adams mod done to the front spring eye of the, the leaf spring perch which lowers the attach point and it effectively plants the tires on the ground. It's almost like a traction bar or a traction aid of sort. It helps plant the tires on corner exit. And thus far, I've had zero wheel hop issues, whether it was with the automatic in the car or with the six speed that's in there now. And I do get pretty aggressive on the clutch. The front and rear spring eyes are Delalume um, on the rear leaves. And I do not have a rear sway bar, so Effectively with removing the rubber in the leaf springs, I've actually created a sway bar effect with the leaf. So the leaf itself has to twist and a lot of the twist is usually comes from the, the rubber and the spring eyes. By eliminating that with aluminum, you actually get a lot more rigidity and therefore I've eliminated the, the need for a rear sway bar. Ultimately, I'd like to put um, a different uh, spring eye bushing in there, one that articulates and that'll go to a sway bar. But for now, it works really, really well. Interior, well, it's pretty stock. It has a set of 94 Trans Am seats. Uh, I've replaced the door cards. I've replaced the carpet. Um, otherwise, it's pretty stock. You can see that it does have the T56, which you should have seen from the last video where I did the B&M Ripper Shifter install. But if you haven't seen that video, go check it out. It's pretty good. Um, factory gauges other than a auto mirror. Tack right there. The speedometer doesn't work because again, this is a budget build. And when I went from the Turbo 350 with the cable driven Speedo, I didn't buy a conversion box or anything to go to the T56, which is an electronic Speedo. So I've got a real cheap, you can see it right there, Amazon special GPS heads up display, which works for now. As for the T56, it's out of the 93 to 2002 Camaro or Trans Am. Not really sure. Bought it off a buddy of mine for a really good price. Um, it's got a center force clutch, dual friction. That's been in two other cars. And both of those cars were boosted. One was a twin turbo, one was a single turbo. And it still works. So we're going to use that clutch um, until it doesn't grab anymore. And I'll tell you, it grabs third gear just fine and does not slip in any way, shape, or form. So used parts working well on this car. So that's pretty much the extent of everything, or at least all the good stuff. So thanks for watching and remember, keep the shiny side up. We'll see you in the next one.